If you're here, it's probably because you're interested in learning more about CNC plasma cutting, or like me, you have a system that you're trying to fix or optimize. And in that case, you've come to the right place. Kind of. When I started kind of looking down this rabbit hole of how to dial in a CNC plasma table, uh, there was a lot of information on various different message boards that I just had to pour through. Couldn't find uh, a repository. Rep I couldn't find a place like a, a clearinghouse that had all this information in one spot that would really help me get uh, things uh, set up the way that I wanted them. So I thought it would be fun to open it up to the Internet Brain Trust so that you guys can tell me what I need to do to uh, make sure my systems are all set up properly. I'll then take your suggestions, make some changes, and show you the results. My hope being that somebody can watch this and see what I've done and the actual results uh, that it yielded and be able to apply that to their own setup to uh, get some better cut qualities. These, these, quality, qualities. Yeah. If you wanna see the process that I went through to set up my garage to uh, be able to accommodate a plasma table that can actually cut stuff out, I'll leave a link somewhere around here or maybe down in the description that you can click on to kind of see that journey. So let's get to the meat and potatoes. Let's start with power. Power. So, northwest wall, where I have a dedicated breakers for my plasma cutter. Follow that out, it comes out here, and then goes straight to my Hypertherm Power Max 45 spark shooter. I kind of wish I did, I got the 65 maybe so I could do some heavier stuff, but the ship has sailed, so that's what I got. Uh, sensor PW, that's just, it gets hot in here, so that fell off, so I needed to tie that back up. I try to keep the, any data cables away from any cables that could possibly be carrying voltage or a lot of electricity, just because you have to kind of worry about um, the electromagnetic magnetic interference that those can impart. So the other one I have is the ground. It comes out of the plasma cutter here, ties into uh, this distribution block. One of these wires actually goes up and attaches to the table itself. Um, I think that looks pretty decent, but maybe I can try cleaning that up a bit. That is all tied into a ground. Uh, so that's about five feet long. I tried to put it in as close uh, to the grounding uh, as I could. So I uh, tried to separate the cables, try to keep the ground runs as short, except the one going to the plasma cutter. Okay, so now it's time to talk about the air system and the air supply and what I have here that's feeding the plasma cutter. Uh, I went with this unit for no reason other than I got it from a company that was closing down and it was a good deal. This puts out 16 SCFM at 90 PSI. So I don't know whether to trust that. What I do know is that um, my plasma cutter just needs six SCFM at 90 PSI per um, hypertherm, the hypertherm manual. So um, this boy does the job as far as I can tell. I, I think here is where I'm going to get a lot of feedback about what I need to do. I have this going straight from the air compressor, so you have hot, kind of moist, moist. air uh, that's going into a regulator um, that has a place where you can put desiccant balls, desiccant balls and beads into, um, and there's none in there right now. Uh, and so I think this is bad, but I want you to tell me if it's bad or not. I then have that tying into a um, max line um, tube and that feeds all the way up, all the way over to a motor guard filter. That goes over and plugs into the back of the plasma cutter for my air supply. I do have a regulator here because I wanted to know exactly what the pressure was that was going back into uh, the plasma cutter, but that's essentially the air supply. Now I need a design to cut out, and to do that, I'm gonna jump into Adobe Illustrator. I need to put together a piece of artwork that has uh, a lot of different design aspects to it. Uh, everything from um, kind of sweeping corners uh, to maybe a sawtooth pattern, uh, circles of various sizes to kind of see how it's able to handle those, as well as sharp points uh, to really put the, the table and the supporting hardware through its paces. Okay, so I've designed my test cut and I've gone ahead and uh, taken it to my plasma table and I've got it open in sheet cam right now. This is going to be an outside offset cut. It's on layer one, there's only one layer. I am going to use the fine cut uh, nozzle and the fine cut uh, shield, which I will show you. Actually, let's check out the consumables right now. No, not those kind of consumables. And I try to get some close-up shots. These are lightly used. I try to get a good backlight behind it. It, it looks uh, pretty round. It's not oval. Again, the swirl wing, 
Swirlwing, whatever. That sounds pretty cool. It's like a, some sort of like Dragon Ball Z character, Swirlwing. <laughs> Uh, the Swirl Ring uh, is uh, is pretty new as well. If you go ahead and take a look at the Electrode, uh, the Hafnium Slug uh, is only a little bit pitted. Get pitted, so pitted. Uh, it seems like it's well within the tolerances. The Steel Yard sold me the steel and they sold it as a 16 gauge. When I mic'd it out, the piece I was using seemed to be more between a 17 or an 18 gauge, which are both 0.047 and 0.053 respectively. So I've kind of reset everything to 18 gauge steel. Hopefully that will help with some of the slag. Feed rate is 325 inches per minute, which lines up with the um, Hypertherm book. I've got an 80% soft pierce on this. If you guys are running different on that, please let me know. Minimum cut length for uh, torch height control, uh, that's set at three inches. So that's how I'm set up right now. All right, so I got my file loaded up in Command CNC, and we're gonna go ahead and run it and see what we get. Did you catch that? Let me play it again for you in slow motion. The pierce is made, the torch head travels for three inches and then raises up in a shower of sparks. This movement just happens to occur at the three inch mark, which is exactly the distance that my torch height control kicks on. And you can see the results this causes. For the area with THC off, it's almost a perfect cut. And for the area after THC kicks in, we don't get good penetration and it doesn't cut all the way through. Since torch to steel distance is set through voltage, this leads me to believe that although the steel measures at about 0 0.05, which is equivalent to 18 gauge, this is not the right setting for this cut. I only noticed this in editing and it's something I'm going to have to dig into later. Okay, very interesting. <laughs> interesting in the fact that we didn't get what we wanted. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to load up the file exactly as I had it before. I'm gonna set it for 16 gauge or what it was supposed to be when I purchased it and see if that has any effect in the cut quality that, that I get. Okay, I just reran the job, 16 gauge steel settings on the right, and it came out a lot better. Uh, not completely separated, I'm not sure if you can see there. Um, it still doesn't look like it cut all the way through, um, but we definitely got some more penetration. So you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and rerun this again at 14, and we'll see what we get. And it seemed like third time's the charm on the uh, third piece that I cut uh, with the 14 gauge settings because the lines seemed to be a, a lot cleaner. Um, the low speed dross uh, was pretty much non-existent on the front side of the 14 gauge. On the back, it's a little bit of a different story. If you look at the 16 gauge sample, uh, it had more load speed dross, actually a, a fair amount more, and boy was it thick. And this is really where my problems come from. You know, I cut this stuff out uh, I want to get it prepped for powder coat or uh, get it just uh, sealed or do whatever treatment I want to do on it and I cannot get this low speed dross off. Uh, so if you have any ideas about how I might be able to mitigate this or keep that from happening, um, I'm all ears. Another thing that I noticed when I was taking a closer look at the 14 and 16 gauge samples uh, was I was having an angularity issue. If you take a close look, I'm gonna put the 14 and 16 gauge pieces next to each other. You'll see, I, I'm talking about a bevel that seems to um, be pretty prominent on the 16 gauge piece. Uh, and the reason I think that happened is um, something with the uh, position of the jet actually not sitting directly in the middle of, of the plane of where the metal is. Um, if you think of the plasma jet, as a lot of you guys know, it's, it's pretty much shaped like a teardrop. I think what happened is either somehow in the settings, um, I think the torch was set a little bit too high, uh, either in how the torch height control was controlling it, and that might be one of the reasons that I'm having that kind of problem. And just overall, the 16 gauge sample had a few, um, I don't know if you'd call them inclusions, but a few areas where it looks like the torch kind of wobbled a little bit. Um, so that's something I've got to kind of look into as well. But if you guys have any um, ideas about what might have caused this in terms of um, looking at my settings, please let me know. 
So that's pretty much it. I showed you my setup, I did some test cuts and showed you the results. And so now I'm leaving it up to you guys. I'd love to get some recommendations um, from you in terms of adjustments that I can either make to uh, the software or to my table configuration uh, to solve some of these problems that I've got. So uh, please make some comments below uh, and I will go ahead and make those changes in the next video and we'll see what kind of results I get. Uh, if you wanna follow this as I kind of do a couple more videos to dial this in, please feel free to subscribe and thanks for watching.